Good afternoon and welcome. This is KBC Lunchtime News on this fifth day of the second month of 2022. A lot is lined up, including politics and being a weekend, a lot in the sporting world as we have the FA Cup together with the Africa Cup of Nations, not forgetting the Winter Olympics, which just kicked off in Beijing, uh, China. My name is Ben Troy Njue and Byron Abuli will be our sign language interpreter for this live newscast. We begin our news from the Tononoka grounds in county number 001, that is the county of Mombasa, where uh, the Deputy President William Ruto is stepping up his hustler narrative and campaigns in Mombasa. We are now joined by our reporter Junei Karisa, who has been keeping her eyes peeled for that event. Junei, if you can hear me kindly, what is the latest from the grounds? Afternoon, Ben Trainjue. We are coming to you live from the Tononoka grounds here in Mombasa County, where the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance is staging, is staging the Mombasa edition uh, earthquake here at this grounds. Uh, of course, uh, this is the second day where the alliance is uh, taking its charm offensive tour here at the coast region. Yesterday, straight from Dubai, the deputy president landed in Taita Taveta County and proceeded to Kilifi County in Magarini, uh, later proceeded to the Kilifi town and concluded in Mtuapa. Of all those stopovers, the Deputy President uh, William Ruto um, uh, talked about the election amend the election bill, um, amendment bill. Uh, one thing, uh, one amendment in that particular bill, of course, is uh, the ban of live, uh, live streaming of results during the election day and opposing it uh, uh, very strongly. These are not, uh, not not only his sentiments, but of course the leaders that are accompanying the deputy president. Now from there, of course, uh, today is the Kwale and Mombasa edition, and we are expecting that the deputy president accompanied uh, by ANC leader Musalia Mudava, the Ford Kenya leader Moses Wetangula will be on uh, this uh, grounds, uh, uh, say, two hours from now. Currently, they are in Kwale County, and of course, the gospel is the same from yesterday, and of course, uh, we are are expecting to hear about the election amendments bill but uh, more so predominantly is rallying uh, numbers here at the coast region to support he, the deputy president uh, presidential bid as well as ANC leader Moses Utangula, uh, um, uh, ANC leader Musalia Mudavadi rather uh, presidential bid. So uh, of course all the, uh, the alliance leaders that are accompanying these leaders uh, who are on the, on the, on the trail with the, with the leaders um, have rallied uh, some of this uh, resident or majority of the locals to abandon the ODM party, saying that the party has not done so much to lessen the social and economical burden of the residents uh, here at the coast region. Of course, ODM is the, the, uh, has been perceived as the stronghold uh, in the coast region. So it's a matter of time for the region to see if it is um, uh, leaning towards the, uh, this uh, newly formed alliance or not. So uh, that depends on how these leaders will sell uh, their agendas to the locals here at the Tononoka grounds. And of course in uh, Kwale County where currently the Deputy President is speaking among us some of the issues are the, of course is the land issue that has remained a big headache for the residents here. Um, coming to joblessness uh, of the youths and that is of course a countrywide problem. So we are expecting uh, the government spell to uh, start from Kwale County and uh, end here at the Tononoka grounds where he would have concluded his tour here at the coastal region, hoping that he would have wooed uh, voters to support uh, their ambitions, uh, some of their economic proposals and manifestos that they are fronting if they are elected come August 9th. So, of course, we'll give you uh, more details, of course, in a subsequent bulletins. But for now, uh, we are here waiting for the arrival of the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance leaders and what exactly they will use uh, to charm the residents of Mombasa County so that they can support their bid come August 8th. But for now, I hand it back to you, Ben Train Jewel, as we monitor the live proceed uh, as we monitor the proceedings of this uh, earthquake edition, Mombasa edition here at the Tononoka grounds.
Thanks so much, Junae Karisa, keeping a keen eye on the Deputy President campaign trail at the coast and, of course, the Kenya Kwanzaa, uh, as they have christened their political movement uh, is traversing the coastal regions from the Kwale County, of course, to culminate to the Tononoka grounds in Mombasa there. And uh, she has noted that they are propagating, of course, uh, the hustler narrative and also touching on matters land, uh, joblessness that has also creeped up and has affected a lot of youths in the coastal region. We're keeping a keen eye on that, plus much, much more. And still on politics, the Pamoja African Alliance Party, affiliated to Kilifi Gov Governor Amazon Jeff Akingi, has indicated possibilities of joining the Azimiola Umoja movement. PAA or PA, if you may, has however stated that it is still open to negotiations with other presidential candidates, including Deputy President William Ruto. Elsewhere, a section of legislators from Siaya County have termed attempts by to change electoral laws to outlaw electronic transmission of electro elections results rather as unconstitutional. Thank you. Speaking at the party headquarters in Mombasa after meeting candidates for various posts in the region, Pamoja African Alliance Party spokesperson and former Malindi member of parliament, Loka Smytha, uh, said that the party was going to support a presidential candidate who will demonstrate their ability to solve matters affecting the coastal region. We are ready. We have had a series of meetings in our headquarters to make craft those issues. Ambazo tunahitaji, the next government is the address kama watu wa huku. And I think uh, tutakubaliana tuta na wao. Kama mweshimua deputy president, and I declare my interest here kwamba ni refki yangu sana. He's a friend of mine and many of you know him and know that. Lakini siyasa si urafiki, siyasa ni interest. Now we want to make sure interest za watu wa region yetu ziko kwa serikali inayokuja. Also a Kenya Kwanza Youth Alliance have supported the coalition formed by ANC, UDA and Ford Kenya parties. The youth believe that Kenya Kwanza Alliance has what it takes in improving the economy of this country. The working relationship of our party of our party leader, His Excellency William Ruto, ANC party leader Musalia Mudavadi, and Ford Kenya party leader uh, Moses Wetangula. Tunataka tuambiwa kwamba sisi kama vijana, we support them na tuko pamoja. We will also advocate for how the political class view the youth. We are the majority of the population, and as such, we will prove our worth by leading the participating and contributing solutions to the unending problems that affect the common man. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Teso community has endorsed Daniel Mogoria to vie for gubernatorial seat in Busia County to succeed Busia Governor Sospita Ujamong. Yula ambaya likuwa Governor Sospita Ujamong, ingawa ni mteso, lakini anatoka teso kusini. Eh, yule kiongozi wa kina mama anatoka sehemu za butula kule yule ambaye alikuwa seneta amos wako anatoka kule sehemu za matayos zote za county atoku kwa tumewakilishwa and a section of unconstitutional attempts to change the electoral laws to outlaw electronic transmission of election results Speaking in Makasembo Second School in Rarida constituency, the leaders led by CIA Senator James Orengo vowed to oppose the bill should it be tabled on the floor of the House. So I'm telling those who are trying to amend the law to go and read the Constitution and they'll find that amending the election laws to remove the electronic system or method of voter identification and voting is a backward step which does not meet the constitutional. We cannot accept anything that is retrogressive. We cannot accept something that takes us back to Egypt and we are approaching Canada. We are the right market traders, one million more. Finally, nominated Senator Isaac Mwaura maintained that the second in command position must come from the Mount Kenya region, owing to the wide basket of votes in the region. Speaking when he delivered the two million shilling that DP Ruto promised Gidrai traders and border border operators in October last year, Mwaura, who is eyeing Ruiru parliamentary position, 
say the coveted seat is non-negotiable and has already been agreed upon. Kama githurai ndi yo Mount Kenya, gateway Mount Kenya, na kiti ya deputy president, lazima ije katika mulimba. Vyo, ata kama unakuja kwa coalition, iyo kiti ni non-negotiable. Tuko nakura milioni sita, wengine wakona milioni bili, lazima iyo basket yote ijae, kupitia vile ambayo tumesimama na ee kwa sababu tukua taku utimiza ahadi ya uhuru kumi na ya ruto kwa hivyo lakini sawa kwa hawa mefika Timothy Kipnusu for Line Time News kwa sababu tulienda na watu wengi wengi And still on matters pegged on elections, voter registration remains low in most parts of the country as the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission sets to wind up phase two of the mass voter registration tomorrow. IEBC officials in Kakamega say the exercise has registered only 18% of the target in the county as of Friday, which is lower than the first exercise that registered 34% turnout. The commission, however, remains hopeful that the numbers will improve. Kenyans across the country continue to turn up to enlist themselves with the IEBC register, albeit in small numbers. Only a day remains until the end of phase two of the mass voter registration exercise. And IEBC in Kakamega County says they are way below their target. We are at actually 18%. We have not, we have not reached 50% yet. The first ECVR, we actually got 57,816 out of uh, 171.346 at 34%. A section of leaders have resulted to short-term measures to lure the youth to participate in the registration exercise. Nimeleta watu wa IEBC hapa na qualification ya kucheza hii tournament yangu kwanza ukue na kura ya Sheiwe. Unapatiana tu kitambulisho anaangalia. Kwa hivyo hii nimeona ni njia moja ya kunasa watu wakuje wachukue kura kwa wingi. The ID people like they are they have a program that they are running an RRI program whereby within three days you get your IDs. Iko kitu inasumbua watu yetu wakisi Though the government has enhanced access to identification cards to boost the mass of voter registration exercise, the number of uncollected IDs in Kericho County remains high. Kericho County Registration Officer Ruben Andati says 2,713 IDs lie uncollected at the office. Kericho East, uh, where I'm stationed, happen to have the highest 966 IDs, not yet collected. We are expecting more IDs from Nairobi either today or tomorrow and uh, I would wish to appeal to the public to come and register. Whether or not IBC will meet its target of 4.5 million new voters countrywide in the second phase of mass voter registration remains unclear, but all indications of the target will not be reached. So far, over 550,000 new voters have been registered, with the commission remaining optimistic to have a significant increase in the last-minute rush. Kam Chemenza for Lunchtime News. You are watching KBC Lunchtime News at about 13 minutes past the hour. We still have more news coming up, but first let's have a quick breather. Do you have a new story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email news at kbc.co.ke or call 0723 892 654 or 0734 the fact that you are my son means that you have to pull up your socks. Kota. <laughs> Kota. <laughs> 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 
Hata kuona kaa wewe shamba boy. Sasa nishinda mimi mtu ya kote. Twende. family emergency. Hey, I hope it was very serious indeed. But let me ask you, look at her, look at her. Hey, which similar superstar has a fossil sense like Kamele? Uh, who cares? Hey, boy, I'm going to get to you. I'm going to get to you. I'm a gym instructor and a nutritionist. Demo, so you can make a menu specifically for myself. Uh, but uh, what's your majesty? So you send Kenya and you to come and pick your kids. Hizo sasa ni ekaya. Hey teacher, did, what is your car's number plate? KCV. Did you say KCV? Classmates, every Saturday on KBC. Welcome back and thanks for keeping me company. Moving on, 14 needy Muslims have today received 125,000 shillings each in form of checks to start different businesses after two weeks of training on entrepreneurship and vocational, among other skills under the new Faisha program. The training, which is part of the Zakat Kenya organization in partnership with the new Faisha program, has seen the students sharpen their entrepreneurial skills. Religious leaders present at the graduation called on the beneficiaries to focus on business growth and emulate their sponsors so that in future they too can come to the aid of those in need. Zakat is a payment made annually under Islamic law on certain kinds of property and used for charitable and religious purposes. It is one of the five pillars of Islam. <laughs> kama vile ambavyo wana walio wa, walio wa, 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 na mali ni amana na wale ambao wamepokea pia sasa hii ni amana kwamba tukitumia vizuri wale wengine ambao wanahitaji pia watapata tukitumia vizuri mimi na wewe kesho tutakuwa ni wenye kuwasaidia wengine watoke katika hali duni ambayo wanakumbana nayo yatakiwa ibada hii ikuzwe kama ambavyo tuadhini kwa sababu ya sala yatakiwa tuadhini kwa sababu ya zaka ni mafundisho yenye imenifungua akili kwamba hata nikianzisha biashara nitaweza kujua jinsi nitakapoongea na customers wangu na wale wako karibu na mimi kwa jumla tumetoka hapo tukaweza kutengeneza mambo na sabuni na mambo na mat na mambo na Okay, Zaka, see at the way we will do the next time with the Poetana in a five side year, the OPO side year Mingine. In other news, the National Industrial Training Authority and Osho Chemicals Limited have unveiled a joint apprenticeship program. The on-the-job training program is meant to instill new skills among the working force as well as to uplift the industrialization capacity in the East African region. Over 56 machine operators are set to undergo a four-month on-the-job training to be undertaken by the National Industrial Training Authority. With one boy, with more. So we get the farm. Speaking during the launch of the learnership program where 56 beneficiaries are said to receive a four months training, PS Ministry of East African Community and Regional Development, Kevit Desai, emphasized the importance of the training for manufacturing industry. The machine room of an industry is the foundation of industry. The machine operators are the most important central figures that ensure productivity, innovation and continuity of manufacturing. And so we come today to celebrate as government, as a public sector, as a private sector, 
this incre incredible collaboration, but for a much needed cause, and that is EAC industrialization. Manufacturers have been urged to take advantage of the many initiatives being run by the authority to put Kenya at the global scale. The informal sector, which forms more than 80% of this economy, will benefit from that kind of approach that says that uh, even as we go through our life, then we accumulate experiences that we can be able to standardize, to formalize, and to assure this nation that we do not lose that kind of portfolio that informs the productivity in this country. Now that we have added value to the CV of the 56 uh, people who are going to be upgraded, it could increase. But that's exactly the challenge we want to take it up. Why is the poaching there? It's there because there is a deficiency, there is a gap. With the NITA partnership, definitely we will be able to start filling in that gap. So that will reduce. Beneficiaries have been advised to use the skills obtained wisely to make them remain relevant to the changing environment in the manufacturing sector. We're working with NITA and with OSHO and other companies to ensure that your skills are developed, to ensure that you acquire even more skills. We identify the skills gap in different sectors and we partner with NITA and see what we can do to make an improvement. The program is in line with the government big four agenda of manufacturing. Ruth Homboy for Lunchtime News. Political parties have been urged to consider lowering nomination fees for women vying for respective political seats. Executive Director of Samburu Women Trust, Jen Naini Meriwas, said the move will aid in more women occupying the elective posts and at the same time having the two-thirds gender rule achieved. Speaking in Isiolo during a forum for women aspirants from the pastoralist communities in 14 counties, Mary was urged women, especially from the pastoralist community, do not have the capacity to raise huge amounts of nomination fees having been laid back by retrogressive traditions. Her sentiments were echoed by the Second Secretary, Australian High Commission in Kenya, Aunoska Charles, who said her government fully supports the calls to have more women come out to seek elective positions to different political parties uh, because I've been able to see uh, in the newspaper in the media that they are asking a certain percentage of fee. That's why it's difficult in Kenya to get the two-third gender rule. So we continue begging on nomination. But when parties amend this act and giving women an opportunity and people living with a disability that women can buy without you know giving money, it, it gives us a fair, you know, a fair playing ground. Um, here my colleague Trevor and I um, are joining this wonderful conference um, to, to observe the women coming together um, to discuss issues of women's political participation and as a representative of Australia we're really proud to support these efforts. We are also striving to have the voices of women and in particular Indigenous women heard in our government. Now to the ongoing vaccination drive in the country, Nyeri County hopes to vaccinate about 28,000 people against the COVID-19 disease in the next 10 days. The county's Department of Health, in partnership with the Ministry of Health, has already commenced a door-to-door -door campaign in the six sub-counties. The aim is to get as many people as possible to turn up and get inoculated. Tukiangalia kwa zile isolation facility kama Mount Kenya, tuko na wagonjwa saba peke. Mwezi moja iliopita tulikuanga na wagonjwa theladhini. Ata tulikuwa tumefuhunga hospitali na ito odhaya level 4 ndiyo tu ongeze wagonjwa wengine. Lakini kwa sababu ya chanjo, iyo kuhakikisha kwamba watu wanyeri wamekubali chanjo, tume shirikiana na... Na, 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 na Ministry of Interior watu wakapata chanjo hiyo imesaidia sana kupunguza ugonjwa katika nyeri The county government aims at vaccinating at least 28,000 locals during the 10 day campaign Tafadhali watu wetu tujitokeze ili tumalize hii percentage imebaki ili tubeze kuingia katika ofisi ya serikali yoyote ambayo tunataka kuwa served Kweli chanjo si lazima 
lakini itafika wakati kama huna chanjo huwezi safiri kwenda nchi za nje because utaulizwa certificate ni kweli si kweli The local administration is expected to ensure the target is achieved. Last week alone, health officials at the county managed to vaccinate over 27,000 people. In Embu County, locals have been urged to turn up and get vaccinated against the deadly COVID-19 disease. Nimefahamu kuna hiyo dina ya Kabonokia, lakini ukiangalia returns ambazo zimetoka Mbere North Number South they are overwhelming very impressive kumaanisha kwamba hao wote wananchi wote wametikia na kuona muhimu wa hili jambo kwa sababu ya yale ambao waliona kwa wale ambao walikuwa wameathirika In the next two weeks, the county government hopes to have a total of 53,742 vaccine doses administered among locals. On the second dose, we have been able to vaccinate 65,634 and on the booster dose, uh, 25,000 uh, 2,567. The county CEC for Health Dr John Mukundi says the vaccines will be available in at least 79 centers. The issues of religion have been overcome by the kind of information that we are giving to them and I totally believe that uh, with the time uh, these things will be able to uh, all people all, all the people will be able to receive the vaccination. So far, 200,191 Embu residents have been vaccinated against the COVID-19 disease. Purity Museo, Lunchtime News. Time to switch gears to sports now. We begin with soccer, where FKF presidential aspirant Tom Alila has urged the caretaker committee to lay out the roadmap towards the national elections set to be held by April of this year. Alila believes Kenya football needs sustainable youth structure from grassroots to create feeder teams to all national teams, emphasizing on improving player welfare creating independent committees to manage the game as well as marketing local football to attract corporate sponsorship. Alina called on the committee to amend the election laws to allow football stakeholders to elect officials who will articulate their issues well. In four years, you know, we have to have a proper curriculum that runs in schools, universities, colleges eh, and other institutions because most of these schools and colleges have surfaces and we must also invest in infrastructure eh, where football is played then we can go somewhere the former fkf nyanza nek member commended the committee for the progress made since taking over administrative issues with the confederation of african football and international football organization fifa the mandate of the caretaker committee will end in april after the elected office is set to take over running of football Alila will face off against long-serving football administrator Traham Barak and other aspirants who are yet to endorse their interest in the top FKF job, which was left vacant following the disbandment of the Nick Mwendwa-led office by Sports Cabinet Secretary Ambassador Amina Mohamed. Further afield, the 24th edition of the Winter Olympics officially got underway after the Olympic cauldron was lit in a restrained opening ceremony in Beijing, China, with almost 3,000 athletes from 91 nations expected to compete in the Games. The International Olympic Committee has been criticized for awarding the Games to China because of the country's alleged human rights abuses. However, IOC President Thomas Bach said one of the missions of the Games is to unite humankind in all diversity. The Olympic torch was placed into the center of a giant snowflake which was then illuminated to become a cauldron. Beijing is the first city to host both a summer and winter edition of an Olympic Games with the opening ceremony held in the 
iconic Bad's Nest Stadium that was built for the 2008 Games. Russian President Vladimir Putin was in attendance at the opening ceremony. Team GB mixed doubles calling pair Jen Dodds and Bruce Moad set up an enticing encounter with leaders Italy after defeating the Czech Republic 8-3. In a controlled display, Britain led from the second end and never let up. Victory puts them third in the standings with four wins from five games as they aim for a top four finish and semi-final berth. That's all the time we had for KBC Lunchtime News this Saturday afternoon. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Ben Troy Njue and Byron Abuli has been our sign language interpreter for this live newscast. Do enjoy the rest of your viewing. Jen wants to see the two of us. I can't give you what Ken was giving you. I'm sorry. When do you do my boma? Anza kuguruma. And now, if Akina Mark was in this new bazoot, Mira Junior began in Taishi. You get my dilemma? Yeah, that is such a dilemma. What if you guys lose? No, 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 no. That is very impossible. I am sad to live, shall we? I hope Christina has not filled your mind with lies. What lies, Mark? Hmm? is an actress and a serial entrepreneur who rose to fame from her role in popular drama series Tabasamu. A decade later and she continues to dominate our screens on shows like Ma Impress while successfully running a construction company. But how does Mine manage to strike a balance between family, entrepreneurship and the limelight? Because I saw some photos mm -hmm. of you dancing away. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But you've been married for a while. What was that um, occasion about? Um, of, I don't know. I don't know why I get to only play this role. I think I do it so well. <laughs> Which is the opposite of I you. know of me, right? So, um, still a slave queen. Still a slave queen. <laughs> Same story. Yeah.